Well, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart was rolled away. And it was then by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Yes, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart were rolled away. And it was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Yes, at the cross, well, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart were rolled away, and it was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy. My chains are gone, and I've been set free. My God, my Savior, He's ransomed me. And like the blood, His mercy and grace, unending love, amazing Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, oh, but now I'm found, was blind, but now. Chains are gone, the light been set free. My God, my Savior, He has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy and grace, unending love, amazing grace. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Chains are gone, well, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, He's ransomed me. And like a flower, His mercy and grace, unending love, amazing. The Lord has promised good to me. His word my heart secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Chains are gone, but I've been set free. My God, my Savior, He's ransomed me. 
hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, my chains, my chains are gone. Yes, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, He has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy it reigns, O oh Lord, an ending love, oh yes, amazing grace, my chains are or some glad morning when this life is o'er I'm gonna fly away to a home on God's celestial shore I'll fly away let's sing it now I'll fly away oh glory I'm gonna fly away oh when I die Hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Verse 2, oh, when the shadows of this life have grown, I'm going to fly away. Oh, like a bird from prison bars has flown, I'll fly away. Sing it now. I'll fly away, oh, glory, I gonna fly away oh when I die hallelujah by and by I'll fly away again now oh I'll fly away oh glory I'm gonna
gonna fly away. Oh, when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. Last verse. Oh, just a few more weary days, and then I'm gonna fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away, oh glory. I'm gonna fly away. Oh, when I die, hallelujah, bye and bye. I'll fly away again now. Oh, I'll fly away, oh glory. I'm gonna fly away. Oh, when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, when I die, hallelujah, bye bye. I'm going to fly away one day, amen. You know, Jesus is on the verge of coming back for his bride, amen. his church. Yes. The rapture of the church is still a biblical event. It's the next great event on God's prophetic calendar. Amen. And what a day that'll be when we meet Jesus in the air. Hallelujah. It's a privilege to be behind this pulpit. Something I don't take lightly. You might need these. You're older than me. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, please turn to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25. And as you're turning there, I'm just going to ask the Lord to bless His Word. I do not know how this mic sounds. It's the first time I've ever used it. It's a little echoey up here. However you can do to take care of that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, come before you this morning and just pray that Your Word would go forth with power and authority and might to change our lives. It's the whole point of gathering together is to become more like Jesus to hear His Word, to allow His Spirit to work in our life. And I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew 25, are you there? This message was birthed out of one of my walks early in the morning with our dog, Ella. We have a golden doodle, which to some would seem kind of like a a girly dog for a guy to have, but she's really cool. And we were walking one day, and she just enjoys life. And I wish sometimes when I look at her, I would enjoy it as much. Because sometimes I don't have my faith where it needs to be. And this message has to do about where we place our faith and Jesus working in our life. And as I'm walking along, I look at her, and she's just sniffing all over the place. I mean, she's a dog. And I looked down at her one day, and I had this thought. She's loyal. I mean, to the point where you can, you can pretty much beat a dog. Not that I do, because I don't. And they're still loyal. She looks at you with the same bewildering look. Every time she sees you, like, here's that guy again. You know, and I thought, oh, to be like a dog, just to trust. I mean, she trusts us for everything. Food, water, take her for a walk, clean up the doo-doo in the backyard. Everything. And the Lord reminded me that he does compare us to something, and it's sheep. You've probably heard a lot of what I'm going to share today before. And I have no idea why I'm getting choked up. But anyways, Matthew 25, starting in the 30 verse first, if you're there, Matthew 25, 31, says this. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon his throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall, tongue twister, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand. If you say that too fast, it comes out wrong, trust me. <laughs> I've done it, that's all I know. And he shall, see, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king shall say unto them at his right hand, 
Come ye, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungry, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave you drink? When did we see you a stranger and took you in or naked and clothed you? When did we do this, Lord? We don't understand. Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels, for I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. Thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you didn't take me in. Naked, you gave me no clothes. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they shall also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungry, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto you? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it not to me. And he shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto eternal life. This is a parable Jesus taught about how we as Christians, the sheep part of this parable, are to behave or to act. And while our faith, our, our faith is what we get saved by faith through grace. Don't need to say that. You've heard it umpteen times. Well, we have a responsibility as pastors preach before. We just don't sit in our hands and do nothing till Jesus comes. We are to occupy. We're to be about the Father's business. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. So some of you are probably thinking right now, am I a sheep or a goat? That depends. That depends, Sister Linda, on a, on a few things. But in this example, it is how we treat others in the body of Christ. How we minister to those that are in need, and I fall short. So I'm going to preach about me today in the sense that I have no idea how you live your life. I know how I live mine. And I fall short many, many times. Too many times. But thank God He is so forgiving and merciful to forgive me every time I come to Him and ask for forgiveness. So, what makes a sheep a sheep in this passage is how they treated those that belong to Jesus. That's our first responsibility as a believer to a fellow believer is to treat them as Jesus would want us to treat them. Golden rule. Do you know it? Let me see your hand if you know the golden rule. It's in the Bible. If you don't, you need to learn it. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. I want to be treated nice. I need to treat you nice. The Bible says if you want friends, you must show yourself friendly. Well, if you want to be treated nice, you need to treat people nice. And I fall short, Brother Bill. Oh, woefully short. Neat thing about sheep is they rely on each other. They have protection in numbers, Brother Bob. They, they flock together for protection because it's harder for a predator to single out one sheep in a group. It's the sheep that wanders off that gets in trouble. Amen? We all know somebody in our Christian experience that refuses to become a member of the local body. I don't need other people. I don't have to have a home church. Maybe not, but you're on dangerous ground if you're out there wandering around by yourself because there's no protection from, in this case, he's a shepherd, but from the good shepherd. Amen? We have a good shepherd, people. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sheep rely on each other and they are a flocking animal. Goats aren't. So if you're one of those, and I'm going to look in the camera, because none of you people are like, you're here every week, right? I'll look into the camera for those that are wandering around thinking you don't need a place to belong, you're a goat, and you're in danger. Hallelujah. Goats are independent, they're stubborn, they're self-sufficient which we're not supposed to be. We're supposed to be sheep, dependent on the Lord for every aspect of our life. Amen? Years ago, I think I've shared this here, but I did back at Amazing Grace, my job as a mechanic, I get paid flat rate, which means that 
If there's no work, I don't get paid. That stinks. I had a saying a friend of mine came up with one time, and it made sense. No work, no pay. No pay, no stay. So I go home if there's no work. It doesn't make sense. If I'm not going to get paid, I'd rather be at home. And the auto business goes like this, kind of like the trike business does. You got seven of them to do, and then there's this lull, and you got one, and that doesn't pay the bills. And I used to call Vicky after I found out how many hours I had booked in the pay period, and I'd say, batten down the hatches, because we're going to be short this week. But you know what? God's never let us down. So about six years ago, no, we've been here seven years already. Over seven years ago, the Lord told me to knock it off in pretty much those terms. Trust me, like his grandmother used to tell him. Trust me. So I haven't said it since. But that doesn't mean the job isn't still like this. One week I'll be busy as can be. The next week I come home early. This week it was Wednesday by 10.30. Thursday I was done by 9. That doesn't pay the bills when you're missing a day and a half in your paycheck, but God still comes through. Hallelujah. So sheep are dependent upon the good shepherd. The problem is that throughout America today, on a Sunday morning specifically, churches are filled with mainly goats. And that may sound funny. It isn't meant to be funny, but it's a fact. Churches are filled with people that have no idea who Jesus is, which makes them a goat. And many of them are following a hireling, people not called to pastor. He's called the pastor. Amen? John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Sheep follow. You have to drive goats. A sheep will naturally follow that shepherd. You don't have to tell it, Come here, like I have to do with Ella. Come here, Ella. Get over here. Ella. You just take off as a shepherd and the sheep just follow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, if you don't think that I'm telling you the truth about the hirelings and the, the herds of goats, the sheep are flocks, goats are herds. There's a difference. Watch Christian television if you can stomach it. I've brought it up. Pastor Jeff's brought it up. Christian television has about much relevance to Christ as a, I don't know, Detroit Lions, Minnesota Vikings teams does to a Packer fan. means nothing. My experience with Christian television is I walk away hungry, confused, bewildered, wondering, what was that? There is one gospel, people. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You're in a church that preaches that day in, day out, rain, snow, sunshine, cloudiness. It's Jesus and Him crucified. Anything else that's ministered for salvation, for sanctification, justification, the whole gamut of what we get through the finished work of the cross is garbage. It's another gospel. Amen? How can you tell a goat from a sheep spiritually? Can you tell if I'm a goat or a sheep? Just because I'm standing up here doesn't mean I'm a sheep, Brother Bill. The Bible says that the devil comes in sheep's clothing to deceive. Fruit. Who said that? Brother will get a hand of praise there. Fruit. Judge them by their fruit. What are they following? John 10, 5 says, A stranger, a sheep, will not follow. They'll flee. Now, I'm going to bear my heart here because I was taught that if you minister from your heart, it's received better because you've actually lived it. As a pastor for those many years, I, I often struggled with, and I don't want this to sound wrong, being concerned for people's salvation. And by that I mean you would see people that would wander off following a doctrine, following a ministry, reading something, partaking of something that, to me, was questionable, is that fair? Concern for their soul. The Bible says that if you're Jesus' sheep, you're not going to follow anything but Jesus, which leads me to a conclusion that a lot of people in churches today, Pastor, are not Jesus' sheep because they're following a voice they shouldn't be following. I've done it. I will do it again. <laughs> That's the thing about sheep. A sheep is kind of 
They're smart, but they're not. Do you guys understand the difference between being dumb and being ignorant? Okay. Ignorance is the lack of knowledge. The first time you touch a hot stove, you're ignorant of the fact it's hot. You're dumb when you know that stove is hot and you touch it anyways. That's a sheep. <laughs> a sheep will look at that brook that's from here to there wide, know it can't jump it, and know it can't swim it the first time and jump in. The problem with sheep, Sister Linda, is they'll get back up on shore after the shepherd has hooked them out, look at that river, know he can't jump it, know he can't swim it, and jump in again. <laughs> we are sheep. <laughs> it also says that the sheep won't follow the voice of a stranger Christian TV he calls it the heresy channels and I tend to agree with that are loaded with different voices you got everything out there from the, the 21 days of fasting to, to purpose to 18 days however many days whatever it is they tell you to do they got people that want you to give an atonement offering, which Jesus did once on the cross for all. You got people that want to give out uh, offerings for the prophet, the card-carrying type. Stay away. If you have to have a card to prove you're a prophet, stay away. Okay? So, I mean, you don't have to leave if you're the prophet. I'll leave. Hallelujah. Paul said, if anyone preaches anything other than Jesus Christ and Him crucified, it's a false gospel. It's not going to do you any good. You can jump through hoops. You can leap over walls. You can do everything they tell you to do, and it won't profit you one thing. The only people in the ministries of the prosperity movement that are getting wealthier are the ministers. You don't hear testimonies from these ministries of all people that have made it filthy rich. There is no reason why Jesse Duplantis needs another airplane. I believe it was $52 million for another, not his first one, not a second one. I believe this will be his fourth because he needs solitude when he's flying to these meetings. So, uh. <laughs> we are the sheep of his pasture. We are not to follow another's voice. Another way to tell a sheep from a goat is a sheep has a shepherd. We have a shepherd. He's a little g good shepherd, but we have a really good shepherd who called this man to watch over us. Now that doesn't mean you need to be beating down his doorstep or every little problem you got. One of the biggest issues with Christians nowadays, and from our experience in the times past, is they can't live from Sunday to Wednesday without knocking on the pastor's door. Monday comes around and everything hits the fan and they lose it, which I've done. Mondays really, really are difficult for me because I deal with people. <laughs> you were supposed to catch that one, you're people. But anyway, they can't live Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday morning. They got to be knocking on the pastor's door, calling him on the phone. Take it to Jesus. He's the one that can do something about our neighbors. Now, that's not to say that he won't help you out. But I'll guarantee you one thing, he's going to take you right to the Bible. Which is the only source for us for, us, for direction and guidance in our life anyways. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus told his disciples when he found them, follow me. Amen? Sheep are pickier about what they eat. Not today. You look in the churches, like I said, you turn on Christian television and surf if you can stomach it for a few minutes. I can't. I just can't. I get one thing on, I'm like, really? You got, Vicky, let's. <clears throat> we're supposed to be picky about what we eat. And we're on a diet of Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus. The five food groups Jesus, 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 and Jesus. Amen? A goat will eat anything. And you can tell a goat when you talk to him. Well, what do you think about Jesus? Ah, we're past that. You know, we're doing this, we're doing the fast, we're doing the, the what's it called, Hebraic movement where you put the prayer shawl over. There's a whole host of stuff out there. I have personally seen, we had a friend, his name was Tom Kepler, him and his wife Shelly, had goats, and their buck's name was Ivan, and I actually saw him eat tar paper and shingles. Oh, they eat anything. They'll eat tin, the tin can thing you see on cartoons. They'll do it. They'll eat anything. 
<laughs> but a sheep will eat what his pastor, I'm sorry, shepherd, same thing, gives them. Hallelujah. Sheep, for the most part, are docile. Goats aren't. Given the chance, that, that buck, goat, will ram you, butt you, headbutt you, and it hurts. I know that firsthand. Sheep appear contented while goats don't. Goats are constantly moving around. They give you a look from their eyes like, I dare you. We're supposed to be docile. The Bible says be as wise as a serpent, but as gentle as doves. I fall short there. Spiritually speaking, we can, I think the word is vacillate. Sheep, goat, sheep, goat, sheep, goat. We want to be sheep. Amen? And there's only one way to become the sheep that Jesus wants us to be, and that's by entering the door of the sheepfold. Scripture tells us that the door to that sheepfold is Jesus. There is one way to become one of his sheep. Not many. One way. Jesus said it. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Now, I know I shared this before here, but I'm going to bring it up yet again. If you want to travel to the moon, can you get there by car? Can you get there by boat? Can you transcendental meditate your way there? No, you have to take a spaceship. One way, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody can come to the Father but by Him. He says in John 10, 1, Verily I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold climbeth up some other way is a thief and a robber. There are a lot of thieves and robbers out there. There are a lot of people that are milking. Is that the word of bilking? Milking? God's people. Same thing. Of your hard-earned money. Be careful who you give to. Amen? Jesus is that door. He says in John 10, 7, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Verse 9 says, I am the door. If by me any man enter in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. Jesus. Not Muhammad. Not Hare Krishna. Not anything else. But Jesus. And he's brought it up. I'll bring it up again. You can talk about God all you want. We watched the moments of a different minister today in television. It wasn't SBN. He had a good message. It was on. It was scriptural. But too many people follow that instead of following Christ. I remember back in the day, my mother-in-law, Marianne was a wonderful woman. Couldn't have a better mother-in-law if I, if I prayed for one. Followed a ministry and it would always be this person says, this person says, this person says. I remember one time looking her in the face and saying, Mary Ann, what does Jesus say? Good thing to ask. Amen? One more thing. You don't want to do this. Goats stink. <laughs> Literally. Goats, a male goat, is like any other male animal species. It marks territory with glands and urine. And I don't know which one smells worse. Sheep smell. It doesn't take long being around a sheep or a goat to find out that they smell. Hallelujah. Does becoming a sheep make everything great, Brother Bill? You don't like that. For the most part, things get a whole lot better when you're one of his sheep. But much of it depends on how much we depend on our good shepherd. I know that when I try to work things out, I try to make things happen in my own strength, I make a bigger mess of what it is than it was originally. When I turn it over to the Lord, as hard as that may be, with a little bit of faith I've got most of the time, it always works out better. Always without fail. It depends on how much we trust our shepherd. If we don't stray, the worst thing you can do when something happens to you is to flee from your shepherd. And I'm not talking him, I'm talking Jesus. When stuff happens in our lives, we need to get closer. Isaiah 53, verses 5 through 7, talk about his being wounded for our transgressions, his being bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace being upon him. But it says in one of the verses, verse 6, matter of fact, it says, We all like sheep have gone astray. The wonderful thing about our Lord Jesus Christ is that when you stray, and you're going to stray, 
I stray. My wife strays. She may not like me saying that, but she strays. Surprises me when she does because I thought she's much stronger than I am. And that's not funny. I have always thought she's spiritually stronger than me. She strays. But when we do that, the nice thing about our good shepherd is he will leave the 90 and 9 and go look for the 1. Amen? That's a good shepherd. I want that guy watching over me. I want him taking care of my life. His word, matter of fact, says if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he'll take care of everything else. Hallelujah. We are all like sheep. Jesus compares us to sheep and rightfully so. Why? Because we are easily distracted. Some new thing come along and we're... And he's going, come here, follow me. And we're to the next thing that comes along. Some of us. Right? Winds of doctrine. The Bible says not to be tossed about with winds of doctrine. It's this, and now it's this, and now it's this. And we've all met people that are doing that. This fad goes on, and they find the church that's preaching, teaching, doing this, and they go there. And then all of a sudden, it's all this gold dust stuff, which was a real thing at the time. Not the gold dust, but the thing that they were doing. They thought it was real. Everybody went there. And then it was the uh, science ministries where people were supposedly getting healed and delivered of all sorts of manners of this, that, and the other. Over there they go. Uh Uh-uh. But that's what sheep do. And while they're intelligent, we can be absent-minded, which causes us to get in trouble. How easily we forget Scripture, Brother Bob. It says He'll never leave us nor forsake us, right? That's the word. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. So why do we think He leaves us and forsakes us? Why? Because we're sheep. (laughs) Sheep need a leader. We're lost without Him. Literally lost without Jesus. You're lost without Jesus. Before you got saved, you're really, really lost. And when we wander away from Him after salvation, we try to do our thing or go our own way, we become lost. But He will leave the 90 and 9 and look for us. The good thing about sheep is they're loyal. Like a dog is loyal. A sheep will follow. A sheep will stay right next to it. Unless he becomes, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? It's where the shepherd will actually break the leg of a lamb or a sheep to make it become dependent on. He'll actually carry it on his shoulders till the leg is healed. I don't want to be that sheep. Sheep don't complain about their circumstances. That's where I become a goat. (laughs) Ask my wife. Why this, why that? Don't ask my wife. She's got too many stories to tell you. 23rd Psalm, written by David, a shepherd. Always used at funerals, and that bothers me, because it's not meant for funerals. It's meant to teach sheep how to trust a shepherd, except for the, yea, though they walk through the valley of the shadow of death part, everything else in there, and that's a teaching tool too, by the way, everything else in that passage of Scripture has to do with how he takes care of his sheep. It says, I've got it typed out here so I didn't goof up. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Not me, Lord, I need more, I'm not getting enough of this, I want more of that. I wish it was this way, I wish it was that way, I wish this wouldn't happen, I wish this would. If you could pick your trial, it's not the one you're in. He just said it. I shall not want. That means lack anything. Amen? I see everybody has clothes on today. You're not lacking that. You got here, so you must have transportation. You're not lacking that. None of you look like you're uh, starving to death, so apparently you've eaten recently. You're not lacking there. Sheep are contented animals animals because they trust their shepherd. Amen. Verse 2 says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. That is evidence of the peace of God permeating your being. When a sheep lies down, because typically they don't, they're like a horse, they stand most of their life. When a sheep lies down, it knows it's safe. It knows there's no predators out there going to devour it. There's nothing out there that's going to hurt it because it trusts its shepherd. Amen? 
The leading me beside still waters part, you may not know this, but a sheep, its nose and its mouth are so close together that if it drinks from a fast-running brook, can drown. It'll actually suck water up its nose while it's drinking and drown. That's why they need still water. That's also a sign of peace. Everything's going to be okay. The calm waters, the storms have subsided because we have a good shepherd. He says, He restores my soul, leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. He wants to lead us to better pasture. We've got good pasture here, and he's not talking about making you leave this church to a different church. He wants you to take the next step of faith in him. That's the next pasture. Hallelujah. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's a good thing, because he's right there with us. But then it says, For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We see the shepherd's hook, and the staff is rescuing the animal. Stopping the animal from doing something. They're signs of strength. They're protective tools. Much like I'd be very comfortable walking around next to a guy that's got a machine gun. Bring it on. Hallelujah. Jesus will do what is needed and has already done what is needed at the cross to bring us comfort. The Bible says the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Amen? If you don't have peace, get a hold of Jesus. Get a hold of Jesus. Hallelujah. He says, He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. That talks about an abundance. Jesus wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. We just got to give him the opportunity to do it by walking in faith. I mean, it's happened many times for Vicky and I. We're good. It seems like we're coming up short on the paycheck or we need this, that, or the other thing. And there it is, God provided. Just bam. It's amazing. You do an inventory of the Lord, Jesus working in your life, and I think you'll be amazed. Actually sit down somewhere, get away from everybody else, and meditate upon how God has been so good to you. And you will be amazed. Because we are absent-minded sheep. God did that for me yesterday. That's gone. What are you going to do for me today? Which is a good thing to do, but we forget about what he's done. Hallelujah. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's God's will for you. And it should be our will for ourselves. I want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. So how do you become a sheep? you got to get saved. It's just that simple. Most of my messages I preach nowadays are about salvation. You must be born again. If you can't understand that, let me rephrase it. You must be born again. How simple can that be? Well, you know, God's exclusive and blah, blah, blah. And then the Bible says, If I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. That doesn't sound too difficult. Yet people fight a free gift. I got a $100 bill in my wallet. Who wants it? Free. No strings attached. It's that simple. And I don't have a $100 bill. I lied. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Bible says that as to many as believed on him, to them gave he power to become the children of God. It's easy. And it's just as easy for a sheep or a goat that has wandered to come back home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That new heart and that new spirit that he gives us can be renewed daily by faith we do it. The whole point of Jesus coming to this earth was to save lost man, the lost sheep, if you will. Again, I'm going to look into the camera because everybody here is born again, right? Right? Because if you're not, I'd like the people that pray at the end of the service to lead you in a prayer of salvation because it's the most important thing you'll ever do. But those by the camera, by live stream, by however media we go out, which is a way of feeding Jesus' people, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you have this side of the grave to do it. Because once you die, it's over. Your, your, your destiny has been determined forever. A lot of people think they got a lot of time. A lot of people think, especially younger people, think they got their whole life. And you don't. 
You do, but you don't, because you don't know when your life's going to end. We experienced three deaths in our family this year within the space of four months. It was hard. Trust me, I had to I'd rely on God as a sheep to pull me through it. My Aunt Shirley, Lutheran, all her life. i got to say it the way it is. Believed in infant baptism to save her. Thank God that she had attended Amazing Grace several times. And each, each time, I don't know if it was intentional or not, infant baptism was brought up in the message. To which I told her, it's not in Scripture. You must be born again. Finally, one day, after she was diagnosed with her cancer, stopped at her house on the way home and was very frank with my aunt. I said, Aunt Shirley, can I be honest with you about something? She said, sure. She said, where are you going to go when you die? Oh, I'd like to go to heaven. I said, would you like to know for sure? Yeah. Shared Jesus with her sister, Linda. With hot tears, she got saved. She had 80 years. Not everybody does. Yes, give the Lord some praise. My younger brother, Billy, died two months before his 55th birthday. Had gotten saved years ago. And I have to be honest with you, he's an alcoholic. Died from cirrhosis of liver and organ failure. Now, I don't know, because I'm not the judge of any man's soul, whether he was still with the Lord or not. That's for God to decide. But I do know, when we went and visited him the Tuesday before he passed, he was unresponsive, but we were told he could still hear. Prayed with him, led him into prayer, hoping that he could respond to the Lord and that he's in heaven today. But he only had 54 years, 10 months. I've known people that died at 13. I've been to the autopsy of an 8-year-old boy that drowned. I'm sure he thought he was going to live till he was 80. And just recently, my hunting buddy Chuck, who I've been hunting with for 45 years, died suddenly of an aneurysm. It was a stroke in his brain. He had a bleed. Talked to him on Friday. Asked him if I could do something up at the hunting shack if he had any objections. No. Two days later, he's gone. We're not guaranteed any time. Because anything can happen. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. If you don't know Jesus, I'm looking in the camera, you've got to get saved. You must be born again. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm going to have the people that pray for those that come up to the altar. If there's anybody present here today that does not know Jesus... I invite you to make him the Lord of your life, your good shepherd. If you have any other need, I invite you to come up because it's that same good shepherd that can meet that need. Amen? He cares for us. He'll take care of us. He'll provide everything we have need of. So if you have, and the people who pray with you don't even need to know where it is because God already does. I invite you to come up. People that pray, I'm going to have you come up to the altar. Feel free to come on up if you need prayer for any other thing. Musicians, if you would. Hallelujah. I'm going to be honest with you. I fail God daily. I'm not happy about that fact. And sometimes I don't deal with it right away, which is wrong. But you know what? He still forgives. If anybody has a need, feel free to come on up this morning as they pick a song. Jesus gave us the power by faith to become a child of God simply through confession and belief. God is a good God. Jesus is a good shepherd. And the invitation is open to those by live stream. Would you all pray with me for those in live stream? Simply pray this. Lord Jesus, I come to you today and ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me as your word says if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead I will be saved. I thank you. I praise your name for dying for me on the cross of Calvary. I am washed, I am cleansed, and I am saved. Hallelujah. Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Doug. What an awesome message this morning. Amen. Did you enjoy that this morning? Amen. Can we all stand in God's house this morning and sing a song? And uh, 
We're going to open these altars up for prayer this morning. You have a prayer need in the house. I want you to come. I want you to come if you have a prayer need this morning. It can be unspoken. You can pray with one of the elders. Otherwise, come to this altar. But are we a sheep or are we a goat? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Do we have a song? Power of the cross is still the same today. You need to come to this altar. Power Hold back. Let's come. Let's come. Let's believe God this morning. Still wash your sins away. The power of his love draws me to his side. The power of his amazing grace redeems and justifies all oh, the power of the Father. Talk to your true shepherd, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, the chief shepherd. Amen. The power of his grace to everyone. The power of his cross is still the same today. The power of his blood still washes sins away. Power of His love draws us to His side. The power of His amazing grace redeems and justifies all the power of the Father. Chains are gone, yes, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, He's ransomed me, and my good love, His mercy is raised, unending love, amazing my chains are gone, yes, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, He's ransomed me, and my good love, His mercy is raised, unending 